Have you ever found yourself pulling out your camera, snapping a picture of what you see, and it never doing justice to the awesomeness before you? This trip was just like that, and it's like nothing I've ever seen before. Boulders, rivers, fallen trees, and other obstacles on our way, but we were willing to do whatever it takes to get to the end of the trail. In our quest to explore the most epic locations, we found a hidden gem that left us completely spellbound. From the moment we arrived, I knew that words alone would never do it justice. As we wandered through this breathtaking land of spinning tires and flying mud, we couldn't help but be captivated by its elegant beauty. The air so crisp, fresh, and welcoming by Mother Nature. But let me tell you, no matter how skilled the camera operator, no matter how high the resolution of my camera or lens, I quickly realized that capturing the true essence of this place was an impossible task. The grandeur, the tranquility, and the sheer magic could only be experienced in person. Believe me when I say, this is a destination that needs to be witnessed with your own eyes. It's a kind of place that takes your breath away, leaving you in awe of Mother Nature's artistic genius. What we weren't ready for was the massive storm that had rolled through the night before, leaving destruction in its wake. Welcome to a place so beautiful that even the most stunning vigils fall short. Welcome to... The Cove. So we've made it out to what we think is the trailhead, which is down that direction. So we're waiting for, waiting for the rest of the crew to arrive. In the meantime, we need to get some air out of these tires. There's Mrs. Bow, ready to rock and roll for the day. This is what we do while we wait. We eat, while I eat. I'm always hungry. And Richard failed with the mayo between the cheese and the bread. <laughs> I did. So the story is, is that we made it out to the trailhead and from the previous video you guys would have seen that we had that big storm that came through by us and we've been waiting at the trailhead for about 45 minutes now and I said to Lindy, I wonder if the storm is wreaking havoc because we were supposed to meet Matt and them at 9 o'clock and it's now, you know, quarter to, quarter to 10 and just met up with Brent and Adam and they even weren't able to get to Matt and them last night. They camped in a slightly different place and they've been on the radio comms with Matt and the rest of the crew this morning and they can't get out of camp. The water's too high, Brent is in front of us in the, uh, the big Alex and they did a uh, water crossing this morning and it was over their, their hood. So we are going to go find a place for me to leave my rig because I'm not equipped to handle uh, water crossings like that. But if this is what we're in for, before we even get to camp, and before we even get on the trail, this is going to be a, an exciting day, a wet day, a slippery day, a muddy day, and I'm super bummed that I'm not driving. <laughs> well, take your car and go for it. Huh? Uh-uh. No. It'll okay. damage it. I tried. He didn't want to. Did you see how high that guy's bonnet is compared to mine? Um, not that much higher. It's quite a bit higher. And I don't have a snorkel or anything like that. And We are almost to our camp. That's, oh, that's went down substantially. So they are headed this way. And while this water may not look too high to some, the camera never does it justice. And besides, it's not quite the same when you're not driving yourself. Oh, 
Oh yeah, she's running. Made it out to camp number one. There's no way my GX would have gotten down here without any scraping or anything like that. So we've met up with Brent. This is Brent's 80 series uh, Lexus GX uh, Alex 470 or something. I don't know. Uh, and then Adams in the in the tricked out FJ. How was your little trip coming down? Was it, was it good to be back in the rocks? <laughs> I should have thought about that one before I stuck her in there, but so this is campsite number one where some of the guys were And as we had been making our way down into the gorge with Brent and Adam and their tricked out rigs Matt and the rest of the crew were trying to find a way to meet us at base camp Needless to say they needed to turn around in a couple of spots and seek higher routes the rains last night this water was quite substantially higher here's the rest of the guys all rolling in Matt and them also weren't able to get out of camp just because of the rain and all of that and the water slowly subsiding so we're in for a good day of good day of off-roading and I'm super excited hey buddy sorry I ran a little late bud how are you good 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 can't complain this is magic out here I was like, that's all them. I can't wait till. I wish I could see y'all's faces when old mountain man pulled up. He's like, get in the truck. <laughs> I was going, oh, what's going on? <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's worth it. After catching up with Matt and sharing a couple of stories of what had happened the night before, we made our way back to the camp where they were at. Now keep in mind that this trail that we're heading down is unmaintained, nobody goes through and fixes anything, and this is considered the easy route to get to the next camp. Along this trail, there were mud pits, there were off cambers, there were sections that really any vehicle with less than 35s was going to have a really hard time making their way through. You're right in the back there, Mr. Bar. Once we get up here, we'll get you uh, adjusted to where stuff's not pressing on you so much. Oh, okay. Just, okay, so. I actually right. pin you in pretty good. For the vlog, this is Matt. I don't know that we actually introduced you in the previous video. We kind of just hijacked your garage and did what we needed to do. All right, so this is the one water crossing, and the water's already dropping. I suppose this will be our second for the day. <laughs> Can you tell I'm loving this? You know, well, since I did water crossings like this. No ways my GX would make it through there. Not too bad.
So it's the first big water crossing coming out of camp. And again, because of all the rains that came through last night, we just don't know how deep these things are. So we're just gonna take it easy. Eventually, you have to drop off it over there where the white water is. I just don't know what. Because that's one of those, once you're in it, you're not stopping. And your nose comes off and you start going down river. Your trees aren't gonna let you get back across. You gotta wait, you get, no, 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 straighten out. You got a boulder right here. Is that better or no? You need more? Yeah. I mean, I'll get in. I don't care. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. I'm getting in. Yeah, he's terrible. He tells you not he'll get in once you're in the middle. Oh, shit. Oh, oh, oh. I owe you a dent. I'm going to catch up with y'all, but there's a bunch of wax. At least it's a passenger side. Huh? I'm like a beaver. <laughs> it actually didn't do anything. <laughs> That's like the one thing that didn't happen. <laughs> you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Are you ready? Yeah. Oh, this was silly. It's just unknown. I know. If it had been four feet deep, we'd be in some trouble. I know. Right. I know. And in water, water's one of those things you don't want to play around in. No. We made it through this water crossing pretty unscathed, but there's always a challenge with not knowing what lies underneath. Boulders, holes, rocks. And with all the rain that had come through last night, we had no idea what to expect. So Anthony, who walked this, first of all, guys, don't go walking through rapids like this unless you know what you're doing. Anthony is a trained firefighter for these types of situations. In my opinion, this was one of the most underrated vehicles that went with us on the trip. But later on, you'll see that Brandon gets himself into a little bit of trouble that requires some winching. This is the untold stories of the YouTuber. Hi, buddy. <laughs> you got to film and then you got to run. Oh, yeah, I'm not going through there. Hey, give me a little room right here, I might have to back up. Yeah, you're not gonna get through here. Uh, you got a, about an inch on this side. At this point, it was time to have a little bit of fun on the trail. Sergio was adamant that we'd be able to pass through between these two trees. But match okay. GX, well, you let's what? just say, he needs to go on a diet before time? it's gonna get no. through there. Because, uh, you know, sorry, well, too, too, too close. Well, the 80 for three, yeah? Negative. Let's try I it. Just I can't wait to see it. <laughs> <laughs> You'll gain an inch on the back. That's what I did last time. I mean, I just... <laughs> That's what I, like, I so this here is the gap that we tried to fit through. And it's just, it's not happening. We, uh, we've we already taken some bark off the tree here. So, next up. It's going to be easy, guys. Hey. Straight through. Yeah. Hey, Sergey. Pull, pull. Okay, little man. So, I don't know your name. Who are you? I'm Richard, pleased to meet you. Are you the uh, are you the little guy that everybody talks about that gives all the good instructions on how to... So he's just saying, just go through here, just push through the trees, the mud pit is not that deep. I mean, he didn't even check, but do you reckon we're gonna get through here? Yeah. Good, well, we'll check in later and see. Uh -uh. Whoa, you're gonna snap a CV or something like that. Matt, our fearless team lead, decided that he was going to cautiously crawl into this mud hole and see how far he could get. The mud hole had other news for us. For those of you that know Matt will know that um, he's a pretty cautious driver. Anybody without a front locker is going to struggle a bit there. After a few more tries of trying to get out of the mud pit, we decided that it was just best to pull line 
and to winch out of there before anything was broken or damaged. But before that, Matt just had to give us a little bit of a flex just to say that he's got it. And just remember kids, that having a winch and using it doesn't make you any less of a man. It's just another tool that we use to get out of tricky situations and not hurt anybody in the process. So right about here we stopped and Mac gave me a bit of a scolding. Yes, that's me with the white cap on. And as you'll notice I stuck my hand onto the A pillar of his rig and a tree. And if his rig had a rolled back, my arm probably would have been snapped in half. So remember, safety first and sometimes we do these things without thinking. Next up was Drew, also commonly known as the Gladdy Daddy. And he made this look so easy nice. because obviously he had watched the Lexus go up first so he knew exactly which line to pick and how much heavy foot to put on the right pedal. Hey Drew, we never got it on camera, can we redo it? So we've made it to our next water crossing and this water at the back here seems to be pretty deep, but we've got a nice lineup of all the rigs down here, and we definitely can't back up, so we're gonna have to go through. So, around that section is where it gets a little bit deep, so I think we're gonna have to go up this run, gun it over, and then go. Because this water is flowing pretty hard at the moment. Straight, I would almost aim for that white rock over there. Oh, Swing it yeah. I'm pretty sure your brownies have green frosting on. It sounds great, just sitting over here. Easy once you've done it, right? <laughs> oh, we got some water in the car. Yeah. Where? All over the place. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> you did get a bit of. I mean, eventually the water's got to run out, right? How was that? Did you get water in the car? No snorkel gang right there, but they made it. Since first time driving off road, she's doing so good, especially with this water crossing, keeping the bow in front. Yep. The YouTuber life. Running from the back to the front. Hoping not to step on a copper head. Cause I gotta get all the way to the front.
Alison, uh, observe. Okay, so this spot we just made it through. We've jumped into the gladiator now, but this spot over here is a little tight for the gladiator. So we're just gonna do a little bit of spotting and then get across here. Oh, Drew's gonna take it through a different line. That is impressive for a first time off-roader. Drew did awesome in spotting. Alison did good did with driving. Well done. Alison is kicking ass for somebody who's never been off road before. I am. I think she gets driver of the day. We got a bit of a call. G60 is caught up. That's not looking pretty. Yeah, you are stuck up there, good and solid, sir. You can't pull him back. He's just on a skin. Sir, you can't park there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he's got to come off that skid, hit a bunch of cross members, and then up on another skid. I think going going back and then just repositioning yourself will be more luck. Yeah, the hitch is buried pretty good. Here you go, got you. Oh, thank you. Got it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I apologize if you your camera. Oh yeah, she's buried in there good. Hey, uh, spend a little quality time with this tire when you get back to camp tonight. Yeah, get that barked out. Yeah, no, he's buried in you good. So this is the same spot that Drew tried to come up with and if we had have had a front locker, Drew's uh, air compressor, at least for the front locker portion is leaking. Drew would have made it up here, but this is sloppery mud with the wood which doesn't help. But I have to admit, it's not often you get to see the GX460, these new models, station. out on here, and um, it's good to see a rig like this out. I mean, this is all bougie. Wow, that's tricked out. Yep, that's... Hey, Mom, can I get one of these too? So we're just trying to decide what to do here. Do we winch them back, or do we winch them up? My concern with winching them up is that rock over there gets stuck in between those two those two plates what's happened so we can give this a try see what happens Brandon out there go. that should be good All right, right there just a straight line from right here okay back in Blind in Alright, Brandon, anytime you're ready, 
I'm trying to stamp right in your way. <laughs> Give it just a little bit of wheel speed, just like, just touch it. Easy on the steering. Just a little bit driver right there. He's up on that gas. Make it easy on that steering, not so hard. A little less. Alright, hold that last hand, let me get all the unnecessary cooking for now off of you. Let, yeah, just, nope, hold it right there. A little bit of gas, just touch it. A little more driver now. Looking good. That's good right there. Good job. So Uncle Drew being the guy that he is, he wants to take Brandon up this line over here, which nobody else has come up. But Drew's got a trick up his sleeve. He's old handed all of these, um, telling people where to go and getting them up. Work, work dumber, not harder. I, I, I like that as long as it works the first time. <laughs> Come straight ahead for a sec. Nicely done. Great. Straighten it up. Straighten it up. A little bit faster. A little more. A little more. A little more. There you go. Driver. Passenger. That front end is going to climb a little bit, but it's going to be good. That because Drew's got Gladiator, he's telling Allison and teaching her how to do this. So his little nickname is Gladdy Daddy for this trail. It's, I think it may stick. So I hate to say it, but FJ's having a bit of a rough time getting up here, and I think this is a manual. And I saw some smoke coming out, which I'm assuming that's, that's clutch. Light from the sky burns, and you see me come around from the other side. Come on. Set the light in me, the light in me. Oh, that's 
that's what skid plates are for. <laughs> At this point, things got a little bit exciting getting this GX460 up this ledge with a few chefs in the kitchen. I'm just going to stand there and watch three chefs in the kitchen telling one GX how to get up. So we want to get the back end that way so that it misses the rock. Yeah, yeah, we just need it. We need to come down off of this all together. Oh, I see what you're doing. Is somebody watching the tree behind him? There goes the bumper. You're there now. Back. It's going to rip the bumper off. Slowly. It's there now, okay. A little bit more. Oh, right there. I want you to put your driver front tire on that point. All right, a little bit passenger, a little bit. Right there. Come back to me a little bit. Right there. Passenger. Keep going, passenger. Real slow. Straighten it up. Hold it. You're gonna need a little bump over that. Yeah, he just slipped off here. He's probably gonna have to bump it. Let's wide it for a minute. Go back just a little bit. Right there. Straighten it up. Straighten. Right there. Give me a toe out. Give me a toe on the brake and just flip the throttle. Harder. Go big little ball. Go back like eight inches. Are we on the control arm? We are. Throw a rock under that. Back it up. Passenger and back. Slow, slow. His grip is on a big rock. See if I can get rock steady yeah, here. Yeah, we want to get rock right on the right side. Right Hold right tight. Right. So is it driver or passenger, dude? Uh, <laughs> both. <laughs> Other driver. Good job. Like, That's wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. When I give you a direction, like, don't go all the way. Just, just, just a nudge. Well, 
Besides a little bit of uh, cosmetic in the front, she good. So, good ending almost to the day. We've got Matt with no rear brake pads. They totally chewed on both sides. We've got Brent who is stuck in four low. Everybody's covered in mud. We've got, I've got to show you guys this, a rim on the GX that is broke. That there is a clean brake in that rim. And you know what, that's just how the day goes. So we're heading back now to pick up my rig. Everybody else is gonna head back to camp. We're gonna start heading home. It's been a good day it's been a long day it's now eight o'clock back home chattanooga time so we've been out on the trail for a good couple of hours and we are finally home it has been a long day and if you haven't figured it out by now cove really consists of clay some rocks uh, and a lot of water crossings we probably did about eight or nine in total today and it was an absolute blast so thank you to matt for organizing thank you to everyone of the southeast um wheelers group i had a blast meeting all of you guys it was so much fun lindy and i are butchered though we are it's it's been a long day out on the trails but we're super happy that we got to go out and get dirty again and find ticks on us and you know all that other great stuff so thank you for watching this video if you haven't subscribed already and you enjoyed this video hit that subscribe button down below leave us some love in the comments like share it with your granny and hopefully we'll be able to get out to the cove again soon and share some more with you i cannot wait to get there when it's fall when all the leaves are falling and turning into you know the oranges and everything like that it's going to be beautiful anyway until the next one bye